This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create these uh, three-dimensional curled arrows that you see here on my screen using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we do in Inkscape is set our view to custom and then we'll zoom in at 100%. Zoom one to one. We'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button. Make sure you have last selected chosen from that dropdown. And then we will open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. And that will be good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an oval. So come over to the circles and ellipses tool. Just click and drag on the canvas to create an oval about that shape and size right there. And then we're gonna take the opacity and bring that down in half. And let me go back to the select tool and bring this over here to the center of the page. And with this selected, Let's go to uh, Path, Linked Offset. And so to create another copy of it, and we're gonna turn that red, and we're gonna take this little node up here and bring that down about, maybe about that much. And then once we've done that, we could finalize it by going to Path, Object to Path. And we'll go back to our Select tool, and let's raise that to the top. So the next thing we will do is, Let's take this black oval in the background, the bigger one, and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll turn that copy green. And we could hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down, maybe about that far. And then we could zoom in over this left hand side by pressing plus and minus on the keyboard. That's, a, that's one way to zoom. What I like to do is hold control on the keyboard and roll upwards in the mouse wheel. I'm gonna zoom in about that much just so we can see these two left edges right here. And I'm gonna grab the Bezier pen, and I'm gonna turn on the Snap to Paths tool. And I'm gonna snap the cursor onto the very far left side of this oval. And once it snaps, go ahead and click. We can hold Control and bring that line straight up until it snaps onto that oval, and click. And then let's zoom out by holding Control and rolling down on the mouse wheel. And then I'm gonna hold Control and bring this line over all the way to the right until it snaps onto the right, to the right edge over that, on that oval. And go ahead and click. And still holding control, I'm going to bring this line straight down, click, and then we can let go of control and just connect it back to the starting point. And there we will have this shape that we just drew. And what I'm going to do now is go to the select tool. I'm going to hold shift and click on the oval and go to path, union. And then I'm going to click on this black oval in the background. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and hold shift and click on this green circle right here, this green shape, and go to Path, Difference. And then we can right click this and go to Duplicate. And we could flip that vertically and turn that blue and then hold Shift and click on that black oval and align the top edges, this button right here, align top edges, just like that. And then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Now let's take um, let's take this whole thing and click and drag over all of it, and then click it a second time so we get our rotation handles, and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag one of these corner arrows around until it's sitting upright like this. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect it. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to click on this green shape right here, and I'm going to raise this to the top with this button right here, raise selected objects to the top. And then I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate and then hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this off to the right. We're going to use that later on towards the end. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this red oval and then hold shift and click on the black oval so we have them both selected. Oops, I accidentally grabbed the green one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so I could get a good view of how I where to grab it right there just like that. And with them both selected, go to path, difference. And we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Now let's take this blue shape, click on that, and let's lower that to the bottom with this button right here. Lower selection objects to the bottom, like that. And now we're going to create an arrow right here. We're going to create a little triangle to put right there. And to do that, I'm just going to go to the squares and rectangles tool, hold control and shift, and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square. And we go to our select tool, click that a second time to get the rotation handles, and hold control, Click and drag this around until it's, the corners are upright like that. And then I'll right click this and go to duplicate. 
and I'll turn that red. And then I'll hold control and I'll rotate this back around so it's with the flat sides up and down. And then I'll click on this again to get back to the scaling handles and hold control and grab this top arrow and just scale this all the way up until the red square is wider than the blue diamond beneath it. And then I'll hold control and bring this square right up to about right up to about here, just below the corner of that blue box right there. And once you have it there, you can hold shift, click on the blue shape, go to path, difference. And we could take this and we're gonna put this like about right here. I'm gonna hold control and shift and scale this down a bit until it's about maybe this size right here. And I'm just gonna actually just gonna scale this in a little bit as well. I don't I don't quite like it that wide. We'll put this right over here like that. That should be pretty good. And then let's click off of that to deselect it. And let's go back to our Bezier pen. And let's turn off our snap to paths and let's turn on our snap to cusp nodes. And once we do that, we can snap the cursor over to this left corner and then click and then hold control and drag this line going straight through the entire graphic right there. And once it's outside of that graphic, go ahead and click and we can let go of control and we could just finish this line up going around the outside of that graphic up to the starting point like that. And we go back to our select tool. We could turn off snap to cusp nodes for now. And let's take this shape that we just drew and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And then we'll hold shift and click on the green object and go to path, difference. And then we'll click on this shape again. We'll right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on that thin black ring right there, path, difference. And then we'll take this last shape right here Hold shift, click on this blue crescent shape right there, and go to path, difference. So the next thing we want to do is, uh, this, this black shape right here is going to act as like a bevel on the arrow. And we want to add a, be uh, a bevel to the, to the head of the arrow as well. So to do that, I'm going to click on this blue shape, and I'm going to right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm going to turn that black, and then lower it one step so it goes beneath the blue triangle. And then I'm going to give that a black outline or a stroke as it's called by holding shift and clicking on the color black. And it's going to create a black outline around it. Can't really see it yet because it's really thin, but it's there. And we're going to make that thicker by going to the stroke style tab. And we're going to change the width of this to about maybe 10. We'll see how that looks. I'm actually going to zoom in on this so I can see it better. Just hold control, roll up on the mouse wheel. We want the thickness of this line to match the thickness of this black ring bevel right here. So. It looks like it's about half the size as it is. So let me try 20 point stroke and see how that looks. 20, hit enter. Uh, yeah, that should do the trick. And once you get it to a size that, that looks good, go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart, and path, union. And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna um, go back to the Bezier pen and let's turn on our snap to cusp nodes. We'll turn that back on. And actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go over it. Let's, let's pull out a guide. We're gonna have to go over to the left side of the page. You see these little increments? It's kind of like a ruler, like a measurement going up and down the left side of the, of, the, uh, of the page right here. Hover the cursor over there and just click and drag to pull out a guide like that. And we're gonna take that guide and snap it onto the corner of that triangle right there. And then once we've done that, Let's snap the cursor onto this triangle right here, onto the point of this triangle. And click, hold control, and bring this line out until it snaps to the guide, and then click. And then let go of control and just bring the line up so it snaps onto the corner of that triangle, and then click, and then bring it back to the starting point. <clears throat> and then we go back to our select tool. And then we get hold shift on the keyboard and click on our bigger black triangle right there, and go to path intersection. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then let's hover the mouse, let's hover the cursor over that blue guideline. And once it turns red, let go of the mouse and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this blue uh, arrow head right here and then hold shift and click on the green shape right there and go to path union. And now what we could do is let's click and drag over this entire thing and let's bring the opacity all the way up. So we have our shape in place. We just have to color it in now. 
Actually, you know what? I forgot a step. Let's zoom in over this right-hand side right here. Hold control, roll up on the mouse wheel. We want to be looking at this bottom right-hand portion. Let's go to the, uh, the, the Bezier pen, click on that. And let's snap the cursor onto this left corner right here and click. And then hold control and bring this line out at a 45 degree angle. You'll see the degrees listed down here in the menu. So I'm going to bring it out. It's going to be at a 45 degree angle, just like that. And then click. And we can let go of control and just bring this all the way around to the starting point. We'll go to the select tool. And then I'm going to right click on this shape and go to duplicate. And then hold shift and click on that black shape right there. And go to path, difference. And then we'll take this shape, hold shift, click on the blue shape, path, difference. Then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and you'll see we now have the shape in place. So the next step is to color this in. I'm gonna color this in with gradient. So let's click on this green shape right here. <clears throat> and let's go down to our color picker down here. I'm gonna start out with the light shade of blue, maybe like that. I'm gonna use gradients for this one. Then we'll go to our fill tab and we're gonna click this button that says linear gradient. We're gonna click that. And then we're gonna click on our gradients tool. If you don't have this tool on your menu, just press G on the keyboard and it'll pop up. And there you see our two gradients. So we're gonna take this lighter blue one and put it to the bottom over here. And then we're gonna take this one up here and put this up here. And with this one selected, let's come over here to the opacity and bring that all the way up. And under the HSL tab, I'm just gonna change the shade of this. I'm gonna make this a darker blue. Maybe about that much. Go with something like that. And let's turn off our snap to custom nodes for now. That's going to give us trouble when we're using our gradient. So turn that off. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to put this right here, put this up a little more. And then uh, with the gradient tool still selected, let's go and click on this little black bevel right here. And let's give that the same gradient. Let's click on the uh, linear gradient option. And from the drop down, that gradient we just created should be there. Go ahead and click on that. And for this one, I'm going to put the darker side down here and I'll put the lighter side up here like that. And for this one down here, this blue shape down here, let's click on that linear gradient, go to the drop down, select that same shade we just used. And for this one, I'm going to put the darker one up here towards maybe the middle and I'll take this lighter one and bring it down here, maybe about that much. I'm actually going to bring that up a little more, maybe like that. That's pretty good. And then finally, let's click on this black ring right here, that little half of a ring. And let's click on linear gradient again. Let's go to our drop down and choose that shade. And for this one, I'm going to put the darker shade over here. Then I'm going to take the lighter shade and put it back towards over here. Maybe if I put it downwards like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Put it down there, hold control, bring this up to about there. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Now let's go back to our select tool. Coming back to this shape over here. Let's take this shape. First off, let's raise this to the top. Raise selected objects to the top. Click on that. And then hold shift and click on this top part of the arrow right here. And let's align the top edges and then align the right sides so it's lined up over it. And then um, we can click off of that to deselect everything. Now what we could do is let's take this arrowhead beneath the green shape, actually right here, and let's right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll turn this one, um, any color really, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with red because it contrasts nicely. We'll turn that red, we'll bring the opacity down, and then we'll take this green object, click on it, and then hold control and click and drag this off to the right. And the place where we want to the place where we want to put it is uh, down here. Let me zoom in and show you. Notice the uh, the point of the triangle down there. I'm going to move this green shape, hold control, click it over until it's going about over that point, maybe like that. That's pretty good. And once you have it positioned there, press one to zoom back out. Hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red arrow and go to path intersection. And then we could turn that white. We could bring the opacity all the way up and let's give that a linear gradient as well. So let's click on linear gradient. Then we'll press G on the keyboard to get our gradient tool or you could just click on this right here. 
and I'm going to put the white down here a little bit past the tip and then I'll take this the transparent side and I'll bring this towards the back like that I'll go back to the select tool and as you can see we have our arrow here in place now to create another arrow going along with it I'm just going to click and drag over all of that right click it I'm going to duplicate hold control click and drag this off to the right and I'll give this um, click click off of it to deselect everything and then I'm just going to give this um, a different gradient. We'll click on that. I'll start with like a, uh, a neon pink shade. Maybe that one. And then I will go to the uh, linear gradient tool. Go to the, uh, the gradient tool onto the toolbar or just press G on the keyboard if you don't have that on your toolbar. I know on laptops it's sometimes not there. But if you're on a desktop it should be all right click on this gradient right here and I'm gonna turn that one yellow orangish yellow maybe and then I'll take the pink one and I'll put it up here and I'll take the yellow one put it down there and we're just gonna do the same thing we did previously but with the different gradients so let's click on that one change the gradient that's pretty good actually no we want the pink one over here and the lighter one over there like that and we can click on this one change the gradient I'm actually gonna flip this around I'm gonna put the pink one down here and the yellow one up here and the same thing with this one put that there like that and that's pretty good I'm gonna bring this down a little more actually that's pretty good and we go back to our select tool now let's click and drag over this over this blue arrow and let's group that together with this button here, Group Selected Objects. And we'll click and drag over this one, Group Selected Objects. And let's flip this vertically and horizontally. So come up here to the Flip Options, Flip Selected Objects vertically, and then horizontally. And then we can just take this, we can click and drag this over here, and position it so it's about right there. And I'm going to click and drag over both of them put them to the center of the screen right uh, click on this a second time to get the rotation handles hold control and grab one of the corners and just rotate it around and there you have it there you have our three-dimensional curled arrows so if you have any questions let me know and as always thank you for watching